What's up guys and welcome back to Wall Street Millennial. On this channel, we talk about all things stocks and investing. Over the past few months, BlackBerry has emerged as one of the latest meme stocks on the Wall Street Bets forum as it has more than tripled in value over the past few months. Many Wall Street Bets users are posting about their massive BlackBerry gains and pouring their life savings into BlackBerry YOLOs. You can tell that it's achieved meme stock status by Wall Street Bets users referring to the CEO John Chen as a supreme leader. With any stock, it is always important to have an understanding of what the company actually does before making an investment decision. And this is especially true for BlackBerry, as their business is very complex and has changed dramatically over the past few years. BlackBerry's history has been separated into three main sections, the rise, the decline, and the resurgence. From 1999 to 2008, the stock massively outperformed the market, yielding more than 70 times returns for their investors. During this time, they dominated the business communications market with their namesake BlackBerry phones. But starting around 2008, their business started rapidly declining as they lost share to Apple and Android smartphones. This caused a 96% decline in the stock price as many investors feared the company was obsolete and would eventually go out of business altogether. But starting in 2016, they divested their legacy smartphone businesses and refocused their business on Internet of Things software and the stock price has started to recover rapidly. In 1999, BlackBerry released the first version of their BlackBerry phone called the BlackBerry RIM 850. The RIM 850 was a two-way pager that could be used to send messages. They chose to call it a BlackBerry because the buttons on the keyboard resembled the seeds on a BlackBerry fruit. The RIM 850 was an instant success among business people because they could now easily communicate from home and on business trips when they didn't have access to a traditional landline. But they really started to take off in 2002 when they released their first convergent smartphone BlackBerry which allowed for email, text messaging, internet faxing, and web browsing. While these features might not sound exciting from today's perspective, they were revolutionary at the time. They were competing with the Nokia brick phone which had no functionality besides making phone calls. The BlackBerry, on the other hand, had all the functionalities of a desktop computer at the time. The superiority of the product allowed them to grow to a peak of 50 million units sold in 2011, giving them roughly 20% of the global market share. However, success was short-lived as the smartphone market became much more competitive starting around 2010. The Apple iPhone was first released in 2007 and started to gain momentum over the next couple years. The Samsung Galaxy Note was released in 2011. The touchscreen display and the seamless user interface of these new smartphones provided a superior user interface the BlackBerry ultimately could not compete with. Here's Steve Jobs explaining the superiority of the smartphone over the BlackBerry. And, of course, it's an interplay of hardware and software. Now, why do we need a revolutionary user interface? I mean, here's four smartphones, right? Motorola Q, the BlackBerry, Palm Treo, Nokia E62, the usual suspects. And what's wrong with their user interfaces? Well, the problem with them is really sort of in the bottom 40 there. It's, it's this stuff right here. They all have these keyboards that are there whether you need them or not to be there. And they all have these control buttons that are fixed in plastic and are the same for every application. Well, every application wants a slightly different user interface, a slightly optimized set of buttons just for it. And what happens if you think of a great idea six months from now? You can't run around and add a button to these things. They're already shipped. So what do you do? It doesn't work because the buttons and the controls can't change. They can't change for each application, and they can't change down the road if you think of another great idea you want to add to this product. Well, what we're going to do is get rid of all these buttons and just make a giant screen. Starting around 2010, BlackBerry started rapidly losing share and by 2016, it hit 0% market share. As a result, the stock lost almost all of its value. While such a disastrous loss of the flagship product would send most companies into bankruptcy, BlackBerry CEO John Chen was not going down without a fight. He saw the writing on the wall with the iPhone, and instead of trying to compete, he exited the smartphone business altogether in 2016. He shifted the company's focus to building software for the emerging industry of the Internet of Things. Internet of Things, or IoT, describes a network of physical objects that are embedded with sensors, software, and other technologies for the purpose of connecting and exchanging data with other devices and systems over the Internet. The most significant IoT project BlackBerry is working on today is its QNX software platform for connected cars. QNX is a software solution that allows a car manufacturer to monitor the performance of the car in real time while it's being driven and continuously adjust the car's software to increase performance and security. The QNX platform is already widely used in the automobile industry, with more than 150 million cars on the road today using the platform. Brands that currently use QNX include Audi, BMW, and Maserati. 
Here's CEO John Chen describing the potential of the QNX platform in connected cars and autonomous driving in a 2018 Bloomberg interview. So then let's talk about the parts of the business that um, that you see the most growth. Um, obviously, you've been talking about QNX today uh, and the fact that there is some enthusiasm around driverless cars. But what's really going to drive your revenue numbers in the quarters ahead? Um, QNX will continue to, to do double digit growth year over year um, for the entire year. Uh, it's not just autonomous driven platform. And that's where you get all the news. Uh, you know, every time we, we we win a design win on autonomous platform. Everybody wants to talk about it, um, but the bulk of the business come from the today car, like the car that you know, the high end uh, Audi or Mercedes and BMWs, and those that that we have embedded software in it. Just called, so called the connected cars, the cars that have certain intelligence built in, um, telematics and infotainment. So those are where the bulk of the business comes from today. Besides their impressive connected car technology, BlackBerry also has an extremely valuable array of patents its researchers have developed over the years. BlackBerry recently sued Facebook for infringing on software patents used in instant messaging. On January 19th, Facebook settled with BlackBerry, paying them an undisclosed amount. But this settlement may just be the beginning, as some industry experts think BlackBerry could make patent claims against over 2,000 other companies, including giants like Google and Snapchat. This could represent a significant revenue opportunity for BlackBerry if they can win more legal settlements going forward. Due to these positive developments in BlackBerry's turnaround, the stock has enjoyed induction into the Wall Street Bets meme stock status. Back in November, which was only a couple months ago, it was trading at around $4.5 a share. This put it in the junk, low dollar stock category, worse than the years of ridicule endured by the low dollar shares of Ford and GE. Now it is one of the most talked about stocks on the Wall Street Bets forum. In fact, in terms of the number of posts that mention the stock, in the past 24 hours, it is second only to GameStop. Its number of mentions has also been increasing over the past three days. When it is mentioned, members of the Wall Street Bets community seem very bullish on the stock. As proof that it is a true meme stock, people outside of Wall Street Bets have already started ripping it in the Wall Street Bets community. This Seeking Alpha contributor claims that BlackBerry is an old technology company that can no longer grow organically. When investment professionals criticize a stock hyped by Wall Street Bets, it is already a victory for the Reddit forum. In this letter published by Andrew Left of Citron Research on January 22nd, Andrew claims that over the past 48 hours, the abuse he has taken from Wall Street Bets has crossed into family safety issues. Somehow, he says that his family is being harassed by Wall Street Bets. If this is true, it is certainly wrong of those Wall Street Bets users. However, it is also possible that he is just butthurt at the fact that the video he put out on the previous day in which he goes over why he thinks GameStop will crash 70% was met with ridicule. That video got 7 dislikes for every like it got, and was quickly delisted from YouTube so that people would not be able to search it. If you want to hear his points from that, we made a video on it breaking down his logic, link in the description below. If you had caught on to GameStop before the short squeeze, you could have made thousands of dollars in just a few days. So could BlackBerry be the next GameStop? It certainly has the interest to become the next GameStop on the Wall Street Bets Forum. But GameStop was also a small cap stock with significant short interest, so the actions of a few Wall Street Bets users could reasonably move the stock price. GameStop had a market cap of about $1.3 billion before the recent run-up, whereas BlackBerry's market cap has always been larger than that of GameStop. It currently stands at about $7.9 billion, significantly higher than GameStop's market cap before the short squeeze. However, compared to something like Tesla, with a market cap of over $800 billion, it definitely counts as a small cap stock. In terms of short interest, according to MarketBeat, there are about 34.5 million shares shorted in BlackBerry, up from 29.6 million shares. Compared to the total of 553 million shares of float, this is only 6.25% short. Compare this to GameStop's 65% short ratio. However, BlackBerry's recent daily volume has only been about 29.4 million shares, even with the recent hype around the stock. So short interest in BlackBerry is greater than the daily traded volume. So what are the short sellers saying about BlackBerry? Well, Citron, back in 2017, said that BlackBerry could be the next NVIDIA with a two-year price target of $20 a share. You might almost prefer to have seen another short report from Citron on BlackBerry, because when Andrew left shorts a stock, it's almost a sure sign of an impending short squeeze and a doubling of the stock at least. But the fundamentals behind this long report, including its autonomous driving security technology and the fact that it could get bought out like when Google bought out Mobileye, are sound. So what should investors do about BlackBerry? It doesn't look as good of a trade as GameStop was. GameStop was the perfect storm, small market cap, activist investor actions, high short interest, and extreme interest by the Wall Street Bets community. BlackBerry has all of these elements, just to a lesser extent. Its market cap is small, but not as small as GameStop's, 
It has had recent corporate activity, although not activist investor activity to the extent of Ryan Cohen and GameStop. It has high short interest, but not as high as GameStop, and has interest on Wall Street bets, but is a clear second to GameStop. This is not to say that BlackBerry will not moon. Sooner or later, the GameStop trade will be over, and the next pump will happen. Right now, it seems like BlackBerry would be next in line, as long as it doesn't get too ahead of itself. The best thing to do now is probably to wait a bit before going all in, and if interest in the stock continues to grow ahead of any further run up in the stock price, that could be a sign that it's about to pop. Alright guys, that wraps it up for this video. If you like the content, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. Also check us out on TikTok. In the meantime, thank you guys so much for watching. Wall Street Millennial, signing out.